I get a bunch of questions from people asking me what I use for a lot of my vlog videos. And to be honest, I use a couple different cameras, but the one that I use and love the most is this, the DJI Osmo Pocket. This little guy came out about a year and a half ago and it's got 4K video. You can do up to 60 frames per second so you can get some really nice, smooth, slow motion video. You've got a three axis gimbal on here, which is just unheard of in a device this size. Uh, I've got an iPhone 11 Pro Max and it's got in-body image stabilization, but it does not have uh, any sort of gimbal. So you kind of have to buy that separate in order to get smooth footage. And this thing for the price, I think, is still a fantastic buy in 2020. Hopefully they'll come out with a newer version of it this year, but until then, I think it deserves another look for personal vlogging. What we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about this. I'll go over the pros, I'll go over the cons. I will talk to you about how I use it, show you footage, tons and tons of footage of me actually using this, and I'll describe the settings that I'm using. And uh, hopefully by the end of this video, you'll get a pretty good idea as to whether or not this is still a valuable product in 2020. So here goes. The 4K video on this thing is really good. Particularly, and this is a little bit weird, but particularly if you're gonna use it as 1080p footage. So uh, a big hack is to film in 4K, even though you're not gonna distribute it in 4K, and size it down to 1080p, which is pretty much the standard, at least on YouTube, and although that's probably gonna change in the coming years, but you size it down to 1080p and your 1080p footage looks really sharp after it's been sized down from 4K. The other great thing about 4K footage is that if you're filming something and you want to cut into a close-up, you have the ability to do that as long as your final result of the video is gonna be 1080p. You have the ability to do that without too much um, distortion, too much blurring, so you're not really stretching those pixels. You're just zooming in nice and tight in, in a 4K image and you have all that, that extra um, footage to be able to do that, all the extra pixels to be able to do that. Another fantastic feature of this is the gimbal. This is a three axis gimbal. It gives super smooth footage. Um, footage you wouldn't necessarily get if you had a handheld DSLR. Um, some people are really good with it. I'm not, I'm shaky. I just can't get smooth footage without a little bit of help from uh, Adobe Premiere. But uh, this thing by itself will get really smooth footage and you don't have to try too hard. That's amazing. The time-lapse capabilities on this thing are my favorite feature. The reason being is it's so easy. You just set up the time-lapse, you tell it you wanna do a time-lapse, you tell it how long you want the finished product to be, 10 seconds, you tell it how many frames you want, and then it does the rest. Um, it also has motion-lapse, hyperlapse, whatever they call it. They have, everybody has different names for it but um, the ability to use the gimbal and you, know, you can pick a point, point A, point B, and it'll actually move through the sweep of the, the camera gimbal while it's uh, performing the, um, the time-lapse capture. So that's pretty awesome as well. I love the fact that you can set this thing up in a few minutes, walk away. I wouldn't walk away too far because someone might steal it, at least where I'm from. But uh, you could set it up let it run, and in a handful of minutes, you can have some really good footage. The slow motion on this is really good. It's not 120 frames per second. It will do 60 frames per second, but it's really good. And particularly when you use it with the gimbal, um, I don't know that there's a better option out there that's this size and in this price range that gives you slow-mo footage um, like this. So it's definitely one of those things that if that's something you're into, I've done a ton of B-roll on this thing. I'll roll some of that in a little bit, but if you've done any of that um, or if you're into that, 
definitely take a look at this because it can certainly do some really good B-roll. And there's tons of YouTubers out there that have done videos on little B-roll tricks where you can film yourself without too much effort. So let's talk about some of the cons, some of the things that I do not like about this thing. Um, the lens that it comes with is not wide enough. Uh, I don't know what it kind of parts out to as far as, you know, how many millimeters the lens is. I've heard people say 25, 26. It's just not wide enough. And in order to get a good frame of yourself when you're doing kind of the selfie vlog, you really need to hold it really far out. And when you do that, it looks like you're holding a camera really far out and that's not the style that we're going for. At least it's not the style that I'm going for. I want it to look natural. I don't want people to think, oh, he's holding a camera out really far from his head. So in order to do that though, you need some accessories and I'm gonna walk through some of the accessories that I've purchased and I'll link them down below so that you can click on them and buy them if you want. Another thing that really frustrates me about this is it's got a quick slash auto user mode where you don't have to do a whole lot of setup. You don't have to, to, to worry about the um, frames per second. You don't have to worry about the, um, the shutter speed. For those of you that aren't really into photography settings and don't really understand how to get good footage, um, it's great. There's, there's an auto mode and you just basically tell it, do you want slow mode, do you want normal? Um, and the options, unfortunately, though, are limited to 25 frames per second and 50 frames per second. Um, that's annoying because in the US, the standard for cinematic footage is really 24 frames per second. So if you're putting this together in post and you're editing this and you stick a 25 frame per second clip on a 24 frame per second timeline, Every second it has to cut out one of those frames and there's a noticeable skip in the footage and I find that extremely annoying. I just don't understand why they couldn't make the default setting for this in quick mode 24 frames per second. The audio in this thing is pretty bad, um, particularly when you're holding it um, because the, the wide angle lens is not all that wide, you have to hold it really far away from you. So the farther away you hold it, the worse the audio is going to be, obviously. So the audio on this thing, there's two microphones, one on the bottom, one um, that's facing you when you're actually filming. And uh, it's just, it sounds really tinny, it sounds really hollow. Um, I come from the audio world, from the music world, and audio is everything. I'd rather have crappy video and good audio than the, than the opposite. So um, this thing is really frustrating from an audio perspective. 
Um, the good news is they released, I think it was last year, they released a audio adapter that allows you to plug in external microphones to this, which improves the audio quality tenfold. So it makes it actually usable. Um, and I will show you in a little bit some of the uh, microphones that I've purchased and how good they sound. And we'll run outside and we'll do a test so you can hear it for yourself. Um, if you buy, there's an external Wi-Fi adapter. And if you buy that, you can uh, add it. And I think I have it around here somewhere. I have it right here. So you plug it in and it's great. So there's your, there's your Osmo Pocket. There's your Wi-Fi adapter on the bottom. It does not add a quarter inch 20 jack so that you can put it on a, uh, a tripod. I, I, I don't understand why. It probably has to do with the, the components that need to go in the bottom of that. But man, this thing does not have a quarter inch 20 jack on it. And that's one of the most annoying things ever. But uh, there are some accessories made by Polar Pro, even some made by DJI that you can buy that give it that capability. Anyways, we're talking about Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi on this is great. It allows you to control it from your phone. You can have your phone wherever. You can put this out on a big boom pole and you can control it. But the minute you plug in the Wi-Fi, the audio, well, the, the USB-C adapter that you would use for the external microphone uh, is, is covered. And the Wi-Fi adapter actually has a USB-C adapter on the back of it, but it will not take the external microphone adapter. Makes zero sense to me whatsoever. There are even videos online where you can take this thing apart and you can resolder it and make it work. But I just don't understand why DJI would make this accessory and then you basically lose the ability to have external audio. Because So what ends up happening is I can't use this. This is useless to me because I've got this Wi-Fi. I need audio to be good on this thing. I can use it if I'm doing like B-roll where I'm throwing away the, uh, the audio. But other than that, uh, it's useless to me. I can't film anything where I'm talking or I need to capture audio with this Wi-Fi adapter plugged in. So that really sucks. Boo. The low light capabilities of pretty much any video recording device um, that has a sensor that's this small, it's gonna be pretty bad. Um, this one's not particularly bad. Um, I've seen really bad ones. For some reason, my iPhone 11 Pro Max has really bad low light capabilities. The noise that show up on that thing when I'm filming even something simple indoors in a well-lit room just does not look good. The only kind of footage that I like out of my iPhone is when I'm shooting outdoors in bright daylight. It tends to handle that really well and there's not a lot of noise in the video. But um, most cameras, um, particularly ones that don't have a full frame sensor or at least a larger like DSLR type sensor, um, they're gonna do pretty poor in low light and this is no exception. You just have to make sure when you're filming in low light, um, the noise is manageable or there are some really good plugins. I know Red Giant makes a plugin called Denoiser that actually works really good at getting rid of noise and footage, but that kind of defeats the purpose of getting all of this captured in camera if you have to process every single clip in post. But uh, it kind of is what it is. You have to deal with it. I wish they did a better job, but it is a tiny frame. So I kind of, I'll give them the pass on that one. I've yet to see a, uh, a small censored camera that does really good low light. Some of my favorite uses for this thing and, and the reason why I bought it is just on the go vlogging. I love the ability to just take this thing out wherever I am. It's super discreet. Have we said that enough times? And it just, it's easy. You, start it up and you're good to go and you can get really good footage really quick. You put it back in your pocket and you're basically done. Um, I can't tell you how convenient that is. Uh, even more convenient than having a cell phone. You see people with their cell phone and they do do in-body stabilization in cell phones nowadays, but um, nothing really compares to having a three axis gimbal to be able to do that stabilization for you. And I just, I just love the quality of, you know, this thing when it comes to those run and gun type shoots. 
This thing is really good for B-roll uh, and you know, maybe if people want to see it, I'll do a video just on how to capture B-roll with this thing. But there's a ton of accessories that you can buy that totally enhance the utility of this when it comes to taking B-roll. One of my favorites is this, um, it's a motorized dolly and it comes with a remote and uh, it is battery operated. You have to charge it. It's not removable batteries, unfortunately, but it allows you to create some movement in your B-roll footage so that it's nice and smooth. And basically what you do is you connect your Osmo Pocket to the top of this via a quarter 20 jack, which it does not have. Come on, DJI, really? You have to buy a case that snaps onto this so that you can attach it to this. But once you do that, this thing is really useful because all you have to do is press play and this thing moves. So you can get really smooth footage with a dolly and the three axis gimbal in the Osmo Pocket and it looks fantastic. And I'll roll some of that right now. Another thing this does really well is subject tracking. DJI has been known for their ability, um, particularly on their drones, for, um, uh, I think they call it active track, and it allows you to basically draw a rectangle around a subject, and the device and the gimbal will follow the subject. So no matter where you move the camera or where the subject moves, the gimbal will follow it. And it works particularly well. It's definitely one of my favorite features because you can do some really cool videos with this that look like there's somebody behind the camera, but there's really not. Combine that with the dolly and the active track and you've got yourself basically a film crew in uh, a pocket. So let's talk about some of my favorite accessories for the Osmo Pocket. Um, and I've got a bunch. This is one of those things where I bought it and I realized quickly that by itself, it's really cool, but with the ecosystem of accessories that are available for it, um, you could make this things 10 times better. One of my favorite accessories for it is a tripod that I bought. It's from Polar Pro. I'll put the link down below and and, but wait, there's more. I'm gonna remove the microphone for a second. So what I did was I modified it slightly in my garage and I added a few quick pieces to it to make it a little bit more useful. So the crappy thing is you cannot connect this because again, there's no quarter inch 20 jack. So what you need is some sort of case that has a quarter inch 20. This one is made by Polar Pro. Uh, it actually happens to have two, one on the side, one on the bottom, which is fantastic. And it's got a neat little um, wrist bracelet so that you don't lose it. So if you wanted to, you could attach, you could put the Osmo inside the case. We'll just slide it in. And we'll slide it in correctly. Unfortunately, we have to remove the connector before we do that. Slide it in, lock it down, add back our connector so we don't lose it. This little connector thing right here is annoyingly small and it's critical because if you want to attach the Osmo Pocket to your cell phone, and this happens to be a iOS version, but they also make, a, I think it's a USB-C or some other USB-C version that connects to Android phones. Um, Without this little piece of technology right here, you cannot connect it to your phone, which is unfortunate because these things seem like something that you would very easily lose. So anyways, you attach the case to the tripod and you have a tripod, which is great. And I've modified this one and I'll show you what I did to it in a minute, but um, it adds a little bit of distance to the Osmo Pocket so that it's not, you don't have to hold it really close to your face. So what I did was I bought a couple of these adapters and I'll link to these below and I linked them together and then I added it to the top of this tripod so that I can get a little bit more extension on 
my Osmo Pocket. So now what I do is I screw that in. So I've got this, and this has a ball head on it, which is great. So I can kind of tilt it towards me. So it kind of acts like, you know, you see a lot of vloggers running around with those, uh, those Gobi Gorilla um, extensions and they all look kind of funny and they're doing that with their big DSLR cameras on it. You kind of get the same effect here. It's a little bit more discreet because it's not nearly as big as a DSLR, but I've got a handle. Now I can hold it out and I have the right distance in order to get a pretty good frame for self-vlogging, which is awesome. And then if I show up somewhere and I decide I want to do a time-lapse, which I love, absolutely love doing, all I got to do is straighten it out spread the legs on the tripod, and then it's ready to go for time-lapse mode, which is fantastic. And I love taking time-lapses. Have I said that before? I love time-lapses. Can't help it. Blame Casey Neistat for getting me hooked on those. So one of the um, modifications that I made to this Polar Pro um, tripod was I wanted to add a cold shoe adapter to it. Can you see that? Yeah. Wanted to add a cold shoe adapter to it, and in order to do that, I had to drill a hole in one of the legs, and it's fine, it's plastic, drilled through like butter, um, screwed it in, and it's in there nice and snug and tight. So what now I can do is I can take a video mic, like this Movo VXR10, which is a really good and fairly inexpensive um, video mic, and I can slide that in, tighten it. So now let's go ahead and put my Osmo Pocket back on. And let's set it up as if I were doing a vlog. So I like to bend it a little bit so it's facing me. And then I can connect the video mic with this DJI audio external mic connector. Plug that bad boy in right here. And now what I've got is a much better vlogging solution. So I've got the pot Osmo Pocket set up for vlogging. Um, I've got the extension that's far enough away from me so that I get a really good framing so that it's not like super close and in my face. And I don't have to really kind of chug my arm out there. I can just kind of hold it more naturally and it doesn't look like I'm trying too hard. And then I have this microphone pointing right at my face which takes fantastic audio for the price. I don't remember what the price is. Again, I'll link it down below, but this thing for the money is fantastic. I'll do some audio comparisons later in this video as well. Another must-have accessory for this thing is, uh, and I said this before and I'll say it again, if you're gonna shoot in um, bright lights outdoors, I live in Arizona, it's bright pretty much all the time. So an ND filter is absolutely required uh, if you wanna shoot at 24 frames per second or any specific frame rate and you want to control the shutter speed so that you get the right natural blur, in order to do that, you absolutely have to have an ND filter. If you're okay using this thing in auto mode, you can skip the ND filter. It's, I do it all the time, and it's hardly noticeable. You can also add some effects in Premiere Pro and Final Cut and whatever editor else you have out there to make it look like um, you have the right shutter speed so that it's nice and smooth and you get the right motion blur. But um, you can totally use this in auto mode and it'll do for the most part fairly fine. When you're doing run and gun vlogging, it's easy. You just set it up. You don't even have to worry about it. But when you want to get some more specific footage and you really want it to be in 24 frames per second and you want it to be exposed properly and have the right shutter speed, you cannot do that without ND filters. So I've got a couple different types of ND filters that I bought when I was first trying this thing out. Polar Pro um, makes really good filters. These are not their premium line. These are kind of their standard line. They're not their pro line. Um, I think they were about half the price of the pro line. I don't quite remember, but I'll link to these down below as well. Uh, and they come in, you know, it's got pretty much ND4, ND8, 16, 32, 64, and it even comes with a polarizer in this kit. Um, and those are great, but the problem is you have to know what um, filter degree you need in order to be able to get the right exposed shot. So sometimes you find yourself, I'm not 
you know, one of those pro photographers that knows exactly, you know, given the direction of the sun and, and where they are and what lens they're using, they know exactly what filter to throw on. I kind of hunt and pack and I took four and I throw it on there and oh, that's still not dark enough. And then I throw an eight and then I throw a 16 till I get the right one. There's a solution for that. And the solution is a variable ND filter and a company called Case, K-A-S-E, again, if Amazon sells it, I'll link down below. Um, they make these variable filters, um, and ironically, the company's name is Case, but they don't know how to make a case worth of shit because I can't open this damn thing very easily. So let's, let's see if we can get it open. All right, we get it open. All these filters, by the way, are magnetic. They just pop right on the um, Osmo Pocket Lens, and they stick there, and they're great. Can you see that? Can you see that? I have to... <laughs> we'll figure it out. Maybe I'll just do some B-roll so that you can see it. But this ND filter has everything from, I believe, ND4 all the way... No, it's got ND2 to ND400. Um, 400 is a little bit much. It's pretty much like putting a big black sheet over your lens, but ND filters are nothing more than uh, sunglasses for your camera. So when it's too bright out, they can make it so that you can maintain the same shutter speed and frames per second without having to do some, some crazy stuff. So, uh, and all you really need to do is just, you spin it, you spin the um, filter lens until you get the right amount of ND blockage. Is that a term, ND blockage? I don't know. If it is, let me know in the comments below. All right, so that's ND filters. Highly recommend this. Um, it's not premium glass, but I mean, come on, we're using a pocket camera here. We're not going for uh, a movie that's gonna be on Netflix anytime soon. All right, we are outside. It's a gorgeous day out. And <laughs> we're using the pro um, settings. So we've got 4K, 24P, and I have an ND filter on this so that it's not all completely blown out. But we're also using the Saramonic uh, external microphone. So you'll have to let me know how you think that sounds. I am not gonna process the audio. So I'll just even the, uh, the volume so that the gain is the same on all the mics and we can compare them. So here we go. All right, so this is using the Movo external microphone. We'll uh, have to compare audio and see how it sounds compared to, to the other audio, to the uh, Saramonic and the, uh, just the uh, default, you know, in-body audio of the Osmo Pocket. So we'll try that next. All right, and this is the uh, regular audio for the Osmo Pocket. So no microphones, no external mics, nothing. Just the plain old internal microphone audio. And as you can see, as I get further away from my body, the uh, audio gets a little bit tougher to, to, uh, to listen to, as one would expect, but you'll get better audio with an external mic than you will with the uh, tiny mics that are actually used in the Osmo Pocket. Thanks again for watching this video. If you like content like this, please subscribe down below. Also give this video a like and hit that little bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I have lots more content coming. I've got more tech reviews. Um, I'm working on a horror short film, which should be fun. I am also planning on continuing to do the vlog. So for those of you that like the vlog, thanks for watching. Uh, and I hope I will see you soon. Please don't die.